Thank you. Thank you. Just got back from a power plant visit last week, heading to a power plant or three or four next week. So uh, it's going to be busy, but have some time this week to get in some battery energy storage systems. Had a special request from Ben. Yep, this one's for you, Ben. So here we go. Let's get into it. And uh, you know what you clicked on. Uh, battery energy storage systems for risk engineers. First, let's talk about what they are. They're basically just batteries that are rechargeable and they store energy until you need them later and you discharge it when uh, you need, the, need it, when you use it when you need it. How important are they? Well, they help us balance the grid. They can provide backup power for uh, a, a, a short period of time and they can improve grid stability and we'll talk about how they do all that as we get into it this isn't an actual one but i just love the stock footage and the imagination of some of the uh the folks who would think that uh, a little solar panel and a couple wind turbines are going to charge all the batteries in this uh box but anyway that's what they look like so uh basically they capture energy and it can be from solar from wind from from the grid basically natural gas it can be coal energy stored into the batteries uh, it just depends on what's charging the grid at the time and what are the parts of battery energy storage systems well the first part is the batteries uh, they're very important and uh, we've heard of lithium lithium ion there's more batteries out there with lithium in the title lithium iron phosphate uh, has a lot of advantages that uh, i encourage everybody to look at flow batteries uh, another thing that uh, is coming out uh, i encourage everyone to take a look at both of those lithium iron phosphate and flow batteries to stay ahead of the curve but for now we, we're going to talk about what's being installed in current situation so we have uh, basically, basically lithium-ion batteries and again uh, the the stock artists uh, concepts wouldn't it be nice if four little 150 watt panels could charge all those uh, hours of batteries uh, and these things so next after the batteries we have to have a battery management system and it's important to manage the charging and discharging of these batteries because you can cause problems with them and we'll talk about later there's there's different kinds of abuse to batteries there's physical abuse dropping them hitting them with something hit having a nail go through them that's physical abuse Electrical abuse comes when we discharge them too fast, when we try to charge them when it's cold, or when we try to uh, discharge them too deeply. So we need a battery management system to help protect the batteries from those different abuses. All right, so what's in a battery management system? Monitoring, protection, balancing, control. So we keep an eye on it. We can, we can look at the batteries and know what their uh, current state of charge is. We can look at the, uh, they're, they're protected from, again, from cool, charging them when it's uh, very cool. So under cooling protection, under cooling charging protection, and then balancing, making sure that the uh, cells are all being charged evenly if you've got a, a, a bank of cells. And then control, if it starts to run away, we want to disconnect. We want to have some ability to, to shunt or trip or get that battery out of the system and uh, hopefully prevent the uh, cascading of that uh, thermal runaway. Battery management systems, we still are in there. What does it work uh, or what makes them work? We have sensors, we have microcontrollers, so it's a little computer built into the battery and uh, actuators even to disconnect or do that shunt function to, to trip the battery and get it disconnected. Communication, like I said, you can look at the panel of some batteries and they have the, the voltage that the battery is, the uh, state of charge and percentage. Uh, the amperage of discharge. So the batteries are getting much, much smarter and uh, the battery management systems can actually be built into some batteries. I'll show you one that I've got working uh, in the garage a little bit later. All right, so now that we've got the battery energy stored, we've got all that electricity in the battery, what do we do to get it back out? Well, this is where we, we get into a power conversion system, the PCS. And if you've got a boat, you probably already know about battery energy storage systems and you store your energy in batteries, you charge it for, through a charger while it's at the dock, but the battery power might have to be converted uh, through an inverter to run, say, ship power, say, AC power on, the, on your boat. So you're familiar with inverters. Well, that's part of the process. And in, in the bigger battery energy, sto solar or battery energy storage facilities, we'll have to 
invert the power, but then we'll also have to step it up. So it has to be uh, grid ready. So we convert it from AC, from DC to AC. We make sure that, you know, we're giving it the proper voltage and frequency. Then, like I said, the voltage has to be elevated. So we'll have a step up transformer somewhere nearby to get it out into the, uh, to the grid. All right, what else can we do with battery energy storage systems besides grid stability? We can store the energy from solar and wind energy. And this is helpful because the sun's only available during the daytime and uh, the wind is not available at the flip of a switch. So batteries are, and we can go ahead and fill the batteries when the sun and the wind are available and we can flip the switch when we need it. All right, balancing the grid. So this is something that uh, they're very useful for. And it's already happening out in California. I was surprised to see that uh, the, how quickly a facility got built and uh, how quickly it's making a difference on peak demand and on the, the load profile of nearby peaking gas turbines in the hot summer. So we'll see how it goes this summer, but basically grid support. Commercial and residential use, that's right. Uh, folks who live in areas that are prone to power outages are looking into solar for uh, some sort of backup. Well, they quickly realized that solar is just the way you get the energy into the battery. It's just one way. And when you're in a power outage, really, if it's only gonna be a day or two, you may be able to get through that with just the batteries that you were gonna have hooked to your solar system. So the first step in designing a, a residential battery energy storage system or solar system is to figure out how much battery you need. Later you figure out how to get the energy into the batteries, but your first step is to figure out how much battery you need. All right, what will be the environmental impact? Of course, if we're gonna uh, support clean energy goals, your definition of clean energy might vary, but uh, that's what we're looking at as a potential impact. Economic advantages, if we can uh, make the electricity or store the electricity when the uh, cost is low and then use it when the cost to produce it is high, then we're getting sort of a, a arbitrage or a benefit from our investment in the storage solution. And reliability, this is, this is what anybody who lives in the ice territory knows, uh, tornadoes, ice, we get it all in the middle of the United States. And uh, when you're without power for 11 days, you really, really figure out what it's like to, to uh, live simply and to go back, cold sponge baths in the dark. You want reliability. Now, what are the risks associated, right? This channel is about risk engineering and energy risks. So we're going to talk about what the risks are involved uh, with energy battery, battery energy risk storage system, battery energy storage system, sorry. Fire explosion, runaway. This is what everybody immediately thinks of. They see the, the, the videos on LinkedIn and, you know, on YouTube. You see the fires. And this is one of the, the big risks with uh lithium ion batteries, not so much with lithium iron phosphate batteries or with flow batteries. So it's just, it's not a, a given that battery energy storage systems are going to have fire and explosion risks. It's the lithium ion batteries that are bringing that risk with them. All right. And what causes it? We're going to talk about the electrical breakdown. Uh, we've talked a little bit about physical breakdown, but again, if you're uh, cycling the batteries too fast, there's just a lot of electrical uh, assaults that you can put on batteries. So you have to have that battery management system to protect it from aggressive charging and discharging. And then, so how do we protect it? We have the uh, design of the fire protection system if it's applicable, uh, the battery management system, emergency ventilation systems in the building. We want to disconnect the battery as quickly as we can, but generally these, these once the, the thermal uh, event starts and it starts to cascade, you're going to lose that particular cell for sure. And if you've got barriers between the cells, you might be able to protect the facility. All right, let's talk about some successful battery energy storage system. Yeah, it's the battery energy storage system. There you go. That's the 100 amp hour battery, a little charger, 4 amp charger, 2000 watt inverter, all keeping the Freezer, go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a little bit of limitations. 
While I was out there in California, this is the 400 megawatt hour capacity facility, and it's really just over there on the right. You can just see these are the battery modules here. Further uh, upward or north in the photo would be uh, the power plant that, that these guys are most likely getting most of their energy from, but also from all the windmills that are in the area. So they have, they have lots of wind out there and it's an excellent application it's already up in service and working uh it, i believe it's about a four hour 100 megawatt uh bank of batteries so it's out there operating and in good shape all right what have we learned from incidents that have uh, occurred out there now we're gonna get, get into it thermal runaway and cascading effects so when you get just one little cell in there that's got a issue say if you've uh, charged it too fast and built up crystals that have caused a short or if it has the battery has been jarred or if it's fallen or if something hits it or pokes it now you've got the potential for thermal runaway and like i mentioned before it cascades so it, it, it seems like the cell and i can show you videos uh but basically the cell appears to burn out and then that heat just starts to progress into the neighboring cells and it just cascades and cascades and a lack of thermal barriers is basically going to be the difference between a runaway versus just confining the damage to within the, the uh, barriers hopefully right to that cell. And uh, even with fire protection systems, I mean, you can throw a burning lithium ion battery in a tank of water and the fire doesn't go out. So uh, it, it's very difficult to extinguish these fires. And uh, we, we rely on separation of values, barriers, and uh, unfortunately for now, suppression's just uh, not the top of the list as far as protection. Emergency response and safety. We have to make sure that the emergency responders coming to these facilities are aware that these are batteries and uh, just like the batteries in their truck, they, they're always energized and that uh, they're going to have to treat these facilities with due care for live energy. So uh, it's very important that you get out, talk to them, tell them what the important uh, safety aspects are, how to conduct themselves, well, where they will find information on site, what you expect. If you're going to burn up one module and it's not going to spread to any of the others, you don't need firefighters going in there. You don't need them opening the compartment to try and extinguish that fire. All they need to do is keep the fire from spreading to other modules. And with that, thanks for sticking around. That was a quick one on battery energy storage systems. Hope you come back for another one. Leave me some comments if I said anything wrong and help. Let's build this community. There's almost 300 energy risk engineers joining this uh, YouTube channel. So it's great. It's not just my channel. It's all 300 of you folks. So uh, help build it. Chime in. Give me some comments. Give me some feedback. I can take it. Let's uh, keep the channel moving. Give me some ideas. And again, thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.